Well, good morning, church. How you doing today? Oh, come on, you guys, you got to be doing better now. Come on, let's give God some praise this morning, yeah. And so, of course, we have those not here just at our Lakewood Ranch campus or other locations and those watching online. And I want to give a special shout out to a group of people that join us every week. Uh, I was at Bee Ridge campus uh, last weekend, Amy and I were, and I was talking to a gentleman there who started attending Bayside while he was in the God Pod at one of the jails that we broadcast to. And, uh, and he's out now, and he's serving in our church, and is a, yeah, I know, isn't that, isn't that awesome? And he's actually serving in, in the ministry as well back in the jails. Well, he's about to be approved to go back in there. He had, he had to go through some time. They, they wouldn't let him back in, but he's getting approved, and he's going to be doing that as well. And uh, because he wants to go back to the people where he kind of found God and found his family. And he said, when we give a shout out to them, it just makes them feel like they're a part. And I want to give a shout out. Wait, we're going to we're going to praise them. We're going to welcome them in a moment. But uh, I want to give a shout out to those who are watching today from Sarasota County Jail, Manatee County Jail, Hardy County, Holt County and Hillsborough County. You part of our family, too. Come on, church. Let's welcome them. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I like a church that's willing to do whatever it takes to get the gospel to, of Jesus to people. Amen. I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited. Okay. I'm glad you are. In fact, God put this scripture in my heart this morning and I was here early just praying for you guys and praying for the service. In Psalm 69, it says, zeal for the house of God has consumed me. And church, I just want you to know that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And when we allow his zeal, his power, his presence to overwhelm us, there's nothing that we can't do in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to say amen to that. Yeah. And so this weekend starts an incredible time of year for us as a church. Uh, Everybody say vision. This is Vision Weekend, but it's so amazing. It's Vision Weekend Part 1. So we're juiced up about vision around here. So you got to come back next weekend to hear Vision Part 2. And I just, I I, I have to confess. Can I confess to you? Okay, I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I've been setting you up for today. We, We really have. We went through a season of prayer and fasting. And you guys were just jumping in, praying and seeking God, but I'm so glad I'm back on my eat whatever I want plan. <laughs> How many of you can say amen to that? Okay, fast is over. I'm going to Jenny's, getting some ice cream. All right, so <laughs> you guys don't eat Jenny? Okay, whatever. How many of you love ice cream then? Okay, I thought I was speaking to the right church. Okay, so we went through a season of prayer and fasting. We taught you during that season about how to believe God and trust him even in the waiting when it hasn't happened yet. And so spiritually, like you're ready and you're ready to stand in faith and trust God while you're waiting. And so today, as we share vision, like you're primed and you're ready to go. And and I love the fact that God has put this church in such a position that it is now to do great things for God. I don't know if you know this, But people are moving to this place and have been for years now. And it's growing at an exponential rate. Why is God bringing all of us to this area? Well, first, so we can live in real America. But (laughs) and we're going to fix it in November in Jesus' name. Okay. So I'm excited. Okay. But God didn't just bring us here so we could live in wonderful Florida, although it's wonderful. There's no shoveling of snow. There's not praise God, right? But God didn't just bring us here so we can go, oh, isn't this great? God brought us here for a purpose. And that's what I want to share with you guys. What is our vision as a church? What did God assimilate us all together? I want you to say this word. Say the word focus. Because we have vision for the church. God has vision for your life, but the only way to accomplish it is you have to focus. In fact, most people know what to do. 
The problem isn't that we don't know what to do. The problem is we get distracted. And our lives get deluded by doing so many things that are not necessarily all bad things. They're even good things. But if we're going to make an impact, if God is going to do more in 2024, we're going to have to focus our lives so we can make an impact, church, which means you're going to have to know what to say no to so you can say yes to the right thing so that God can do great things in our lives as a church and as a person and as a family in your own life. Come on, y'all go ahead and give God some praise because that's... That's what God put in my heart for us this year, that we're going to focus and we're going we're gonna to aim right and we're going to hit the right things. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish this series next week, and it really revolves around two things, this idea of vision for this year and us focusing, and it really is in two areas. It's around our generosity. We call that kingdom builders. Everybody say kingdom builders. And we're going to make an impact there because we're going to be focused like we never have before. But then part of that is your own life. What does God want to do in your life? I'm going to teach next week, and we're going to work through all of that, and we're going to come up with a way to plan these things and focus these things so that we can accomplish them. Now, as God put this in my heart, as we were leading up to the year, really back in October as I was praying through this and I felt like this was the right thing for our church, I heard a message from a friend of mine, Pastor Rob Ketterling. He pastors up in the frozen tundra of Minnesota. Do we got Minnesotans in the house in any locations? Come on, there's some of you. Okay, just not that rowdy. We're here, but we just don't say much. Okay. <laughs> but, but, but I heard him a message he preached. I, I've been knowing Rob for 21 years now. He serves on the same board that I serve on called ARC, A-R-C, Association of Related Churches, where we plant churches all across America. Last weekend, we planted church number 1,100. We did that. That's through your giving that we train in resource. Come on, give God some praise. Yeah. And we do that as a church through our own tithe. Like, we, we tithe as well, and we support organizations, and that's what, what the ARC, that's what it does, helps plant churches. So, uh, Pastor Rob and I serve on that board together. So, I've been knowing him for, for 21 years, and I heard a message he preached regarding this topic of generosity and kingdom builders. And I already had in my heart focus, and I was like, yes, God, this is it. It gives clarity towards this idea of how do we focus our lives in this area of generosity. And, and as it hit me, I thought, God, this is what our church needs to hear. So everybody say, get ready, because we're about to be blessed encouraged and also challenged in our generosity. And then next week, I'm gonna tie the whole message and the whole vision thing together. But this weekend, as we show honor, I want you to stand on your feet wherever you're at, unless you're driving. Okay, and I want you to stand up and let's show honor to Pastor Rob Ketterling all the way from Minnesota. Come on, church. Hey, love you, Rob. Love you, love you. Praise God. Praise God. Come on, let's give Jesus a bigger hand. Let's thank him. You're worthy. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right, you can be seated. Bayside, we love it that you invited me to speak in the middle of winter. Yes. And I've been meeting people from my church that are here, and they're like, they're almost coming up sheepish, like, we had to move. Sorry, we had to move. Sorry. And by the way, he said, are there any Minnesotans here? You kind of went like this, like, I know this, in preaching to a bunch of Norwegians in Minnesota, this right here, that is a screaming amen for a Norwegian. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm ready, but uh, it's a joy to be here with your pastors. And like you said, we're friends. And our kids are friends. Like we have two boys, and they are friends with the BZ boys, and I couldn't be more happy for that. They come back and they say, like, they're the real deal, mom and dad. They're the real deal. And I knew it all along. But it's great when your kids verify it. How many know what I'm talking about? And uh, if you love your pastors, could you show some appreciation and love to Pastor Randy and Amy? You have some of the best in America. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Praise God. We love you. Yeah. We, we, we helped invest into your church through ARC, and back in the day, we helped give money to start the church. And I'm looking at this, I'm like, praise God, you have overachieved. All right, this is amazing. <laughs> praise God. And, uh, but it's a joy to be here. I want to introduce my family. They are not with me, but I want to show you a picture. 
of them and show you. This is our family. You'll see our oldest son, Connor, and his wife, Alexia, holding Beckham, our only grandchild. My wife, Becca, in the middle, and then our youngest son, Logan, and his wife, Michaela. And I want to show you a close-up of Beckham. Uh, this is our little man right here. Yeah. And I didn't even know they made kids like cheese puffs. I was like, what are you doing feeding them cheese puffs? And they're like, they're loaded with vegetables. All right, they're good. All right. So we are on day 10 of 11 as grandparents watching our grandson right now. And my wife is uh, watching him. And, and when it started out on day one, we're like, thank you, God, this is a blessing. And now on day 10, we're like, oh God, what did we do? You know, like, <laughs> like oh, come home, you know. Uh, now I can't show a picture of my family without sharing this. So I have to do this. And uh, this is like a mini sermon before the sermon. Um, our oldest son, Connor, who has our grandchild now, Connor and Alexia. Our oldest son, Connor, was born with autism. And when I say autism and I share this, people are like, really, you mean autism? Yes, I mean autism. He didn't sleep unless he was in his car seat because autistic kids love to be held tight. We would put him in his crib and he would cry all night. But if we put him in his car seat, he would sleep. So sleep deprivation, we moved his car seat into his crib. And we just have, but we didn't know it was autism. We just thought it's the only way he'll sleep. Everything became a train. Everything was a train in his life. He didn't make eye contact with us. We thought, well, he's very shy. You know, he's a shy kid. And then he started to parrot back things. He would only say like, where are we going? Where are we going? And if I said the mall, he'd go the mall. We noticed that he knew the directions to the mall even as like a two-year-old. If we varied from the path, he knew it. But we thought, oh, he's very smart. And then we brought him to school one day and we, to the doctor, and we said, can you test him? And they said, yeah, your son has autism. I said, I, I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't realize that. I, I, it's a whole new world right now. And I thought, well, I believe in prayer. I believe in the power of God. I'm spirit-filled, I believe in this. I'm gonna pray for a miracle. So I started praying for a miracle and I would fast and I would pray and I would go to every healing service. I bought every holy water, anointing oil, cloth on TV. You know what I'm saying? I need a miracle. And after two years of him being in special ed, I gave up. And I remember the day. I remember just saying, God, you're a good God. You're a kind God. You're a loving God. But you don't seem to want to be very powerful anymore. And so I don't even know how I can preach like miracles anymore. And, but I'm going to preach love and kindness. And, but I don't know about the miracle part anymore. And can I just stop for a moment? That's a bad way to live your life. If your reality doesn't line up with God's word, God's word is still true. Don't change what you think about God, right? Because it's different. But that's what I was doing. And one day after church, it was just a regular day, a visiting pastor said, hey, could I pray for you and your wife? And I said, sure. And I was about to say, you know, we'd like church growth, better offering, something like that. And my wife goes, our son has autism and we want to see him healed. And I was like, where'd that come from? You know, like, you know, like we kind of gave up on that. But I'm, how many know I'm not getting in front of Mama Bear in that moment? Right there, yeah. I'm like, yeah, we're praying for that right there, yeah. And all of a sudden, this pastor just goes and lays hands on our son, and he stops. And he goes, God has heard that you've called him a good God and a kind God. But now to show you that he's a powerful God, he's going to heal your son. He read my mail right there. He lays hands on our son and didn't shout, didn't scream. He just said, God, for your glory, heal this young man. And our son, who could not look us in the eye, all of a sudden looked up and goes, hi, Dad, where are we going? And it was like the Pinocchio moment, like alive. He was completely healed in a moment. Come on. God deserves praise for that. So we bring him into special ed the next day, and we bring him to teacher Pam, and she goes, what happened to Connor? We're like, he got healed in church yesterday. She brings her boss in and says, test this boy, check him out. She goes, what am I looking for? He's normal. She goes, he has been in special ed for two years with autism. He got healed. And the lady goes, I don't believe it. She goes, you put a perfectly normal boy in special ed and you have been stealing from special ed for the last two years. And I looked at her, I got so angry. I just said, yeah, it's every parent's dream to rip off special ed. <laughs> I said, God healed my son and God gets the glory. Now, Okay, this is not the sermon, by the way. This is the introduction, all right? All right. 
so I, I got this download from God because God is a powerful God. He's a loving God, kind God, but he's also a powerful God. And so I said, God, explain to me about miracles. Like I just had one happen. And this is what he showed me. And I wanna show you on this slide here just to see this. The Bible tells us that by his stripes we're healed on the cross. Jesus Christ paid the price for our healings and for the miracles that we experience. But we're living in our now. And he also promises us that in heaven, someday, all of those things will be made right. There'll be no sickness, no pain, no suffering in heaven. But I'm living in my now, so how do I do this? Put the next slide up there. Here's what I'm doing. I'm saying, God, what is waiting for me in heaven, could you release it into my now? I'm asking for what you paid for as I acknowledge where I live, but I'm gonna appropriate, which means to grab and make yours, and I would like it released early into my now. And when that happens, it's called a miracle. And we're allowed to pray and believe God for miracles. Now, let me just explain this a little bit more. As as we live this life believing for this miracle, we don't control when the miracle is released. Some of you say, well, if I had more faith, it'd be released. No, no. The man at the pool of Bethesda that was healed, he was lame. Jesus says, do you want to be healed? And he goes, well, I don't have anybody to throw me in the water. Jesus is like, wrong answer. It was a yes or no, you know. <laughs> and he still heals them. And then afterwards, when they say, who healed you? He goes, I don't know. He didn't even know Jesus' name. Okay, so please don't condemn people that are waiting for their healing that is waiting for them in heaven and asking for it to be released. But let me give you a couple more things. We're allowed to ask for it, and it's really a miracle is like an early release. And we live that way in life. If you have children and you get to Christmas, how many know they want an early release of a Christmas present? (laughs) Come on, just let me open one. Come on, let me open one early. Let me open one. And as they talk to you enough, finally, you let them open one on Christmas Eve, and it's the socks and underwear. How many know what I'm talking about? (laughs) But we live that way. There's an anticipation for, we know what's waiting for us. Could it be released into our now? Now, let me just give you one more thing on this, and trust me, we'll we'll end on time, but we'll get to the message. And I'm speaking on kingdom builders, all right? But when we ask for a miracle, let's ask with faith and expectation, and let's ask because God is so good and so loving and so kind and so powerful. Let me just illustrate this with one more thing, and then we'll pray. Um, My kids used to come up to me and ask me for ice cream like this. Dad, you're probably not going to do it. I'd be like, what am I not going to do? You know, like, I'm kind of offended. Like, I'm a good dad, and they're saying that, you know. You're probably not gonna do this. I'm like, what am I not gonna do? And they're like, you're probably not gonna buy us ice cream. And I'm like, no, no, never ask for ice cream like that ever again. When you ask for ice cream, come up to me like this. Hey, dad, you're the best dad on planet earth. (laughs) Wouldn't today be a great day for ice cream? That's how you're gonna do it, right? So when you go to God for your miracle, don't go like, you're probably not gonna do it. You're probably not gonna do it. You just go and... Praise God, you're such a good God. You're such a kind God. You probably want to early release this, don't you? Like, that's the way I'm going to go to him. Now, now, let me close with the ice cream thing, and then we'll pray. And this is the intro. Remember, right? some of you got excited. We're over. No, no. Sometimes my kid would, kids would ask me at 5 o'clock, and dinner was at 6. And I'd say, not now. Trust Dad. Ice cream's at 8. Ice cream's at 8. It's not now. I have ice cream in your future, but right now I need dinner for you and then ice cream, okay? We say, God, today would be a great day for a miracle. And he's like, I know, I know it would be, but see, I've got all this that you're doing right here and this is the release date that I have planned for you. Trust me, love me, keep loving me, keep loving me and trust me with the timing, all right? That's the God we serve. That's the God we serve. All right, so... If you have been waiting for a long time and it hasn't come to pass, you don't need to say what it is, but something just stirred up within you. Like, you're not crazy to keep praying for what has been paid for and what's waiting for you. You can pray for it today, even now, the thousandth prayer, something within you, faith rose up. Would you raise your hand here and at all the campuses? You just say, 
faith, I want to pray the thousandth prayer for what I'm believing for. Lord, I just pray right now the thousandth prayer with these people, whatever they're believing for, Lord Jesus, they're, they're asking for what's been paid for. They're, they're acknowledging where they are now, but they are saying, God, what's in heaven? Could you release it early? And so God, because you're kind, because you're good, because you're loving, we ask for miracles to be released into our now. We trust you with the timing, but we will not stop asking for what's been paid for and what's waiting. And so God, may we live with the joy that you are a good God, a kind God, a loving God, and a powerful God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Can we thank God for what he's gonna do in advance? He's a great God. Now, your pastor asked me to come and speak on Kingdom Builders because that's fuel for vision. That's fuel for vision. And I love that your church does that. Our church does the very same thing. And and we started with a few hundred thousand dollars in Kingdom Builders, and now it's just taken off. Something supernatural has happened on our church. And this last year, we had $11.6 million come in over our tithe for Kingdom Builders. It's, It's blowing me away what has happened. And it came because God gave me a a, a revelation of how he wanted our church to give and live by faith and to live in a different way. And so I just wanna share that with you here and give you a tool that we use that fuels our vision and helps us impact Minneapolis, helps us impact the world and helps us to do that. And and really, I wanna read the scripture, 2 Corinthians 9, 11, it says, you'll be enriched in every way. The apostle Paul's writing, You'll be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. God wants your church to be generous. God wants your generosity to result in praise to him. God wants your generosity to change the world. And I wanna tell you this, you are part of the richest of the richest in the world. If you make more than $36,000 in America, you are now in the 1% of the world. 80% of Christianity's wealth is located in the United States with the billions of people that call on the name of the Lord all around the world. There are billions of people that are Christians. 80% of what Christianity owns on planet earth is in the hands of Christians in America. We need to be kingdom builders. We need to say we want to live blessed to be a blessing. We need a vision for our neighbor, for the nation, for the world and say, God, let us be kingdom builders. And It starts with this, recognizing that God has saved us and a heart touched by God wants to start somewhere. And we teach this at our church and I'll teach it here. We say that a heart touched by God responds by giving a tithe. When I look in the Bible, I see that it's not law that started tithe. I see before there was ever law, because people will fight like, oh, that's law, I'm a grace giver. Okay, before there was ever law, there was Abraham. And God's like, we're in relationship. We're in relationship. And because Abraham was touched, his heart was touched, he's like, God, I honor you with a tithe. We see that his grandchild, Jacob, says, God, you're my God, and from this day forward, I honor you with a tithe. See, a heart touched by God wants to honor him. It starts there and says, God, I'm on this journey, but I'm not gonna stop there. I'm gonna keep going. Even before we have Abraham, we see Cain and Abel, when they were giving their gifts, you ever wonder, like, Cain's was rejected and Abel's was accepted. Well, Hebrews gives us insight to it. And the word that it talks about for Abel's gift being better implies there was a weight to it. There was a weight. It doesn't say the word tithe exactly, but it implies there was a weightiness to his gift that God said, there you go, that's an honoring gift. See, my heart has been touched by God. I wanna change the world. I would do anything for my King and my Lord and my Savior. He's been so good to me. And so I start there, but I don't stop there. I go up from there and give to kingdom builders. And I just over and above, over and above the tithe I give. Now, if you're here and you've never given to kingdom builders and you're like, you're new, like I'm new to this. Well, I'm just telling you, your church raises millions of dollars and I believe it's going to another level now. I really believe your vision is getting bigger. I was hearing a little bit of Randy's vision as he was sharing with me the last couple of, I was like, that's big, that needs fuel. You say, I've never done this before. Where do I start? You start with your first gift. You say, well, I don't have that much. Well, you start with just what you have and you give your first gift to kingdom builders. And here's what happens. The Bible says that where your treasure is, there your heart is. As soon as you say, God, I'm living blessed to be a blessing. I wanna live so that your name will be glorified. And all of a sudden you give your first gift, it changes your direction. 
I learned this from a bill collector. One of the guys on our staff, we couldn't pay him yet, and he was working by vocational, and he was a bill collector, and he said, Pastor, I've learned something. He goes, if we can get somebody who's running from a debt to just give anything, we've changed their direction. I said, what does that mean? He said, let's say they owe us $10,000, and they're running from the debt, and we call them, and we say, can you send us $5? They're thinking, $5, that will not change $10,000. He said, but as soon as they agree that they're gonna give $5, they've turned their direction. And their treasure is now going towards their debt. And if we can change their direction, they will pay it off. I'm telling you what, if you wanna live on this journey of honoring God with generosity, don't think about what you will do someday. Start with a first gift today. Start with that, and you're gonna change your direction. But don't stop there. I wanna teach you this, plan, vision, dream. Where did I learn this? I was in Kenya on a missions trip and God gives me a download on how we're gonna give and how we do it as a church. And again, just taken off in our church. And I'm with this couple, Clive and Mary Beckingham. I think we have a picture of them. They're grandma and grandpa anybody. They could be in your church right now, okay? I'm there with them. I said, Clive, this orphanage is amazing. Mary, this place is amazing. How did this start? I mean, you have this orphanage all across Kenya. And they said, well, We just had a a plan and we came to Kenya and just said, let's work the plan. This is what God's given us. Let's buy this Rambler house on a couple of acres and we'll start with an orphanage in our home. We'll just work the plan. I said, but how did it go from there? I mean, you got buildings everywhere. He goes, I know. One day we're doing an adoption ceremony and this guy comes up to me and says, that's my best friend and his wife and you just gave them their son. This is the happiest day of their life. They're thrilled, like, that's my best friend. He goes, I wish I could say thank you to you, Clive, for like making my best friend's day. Like, this is amazing. And he goes, Clive, do you have a vision? Clive said, I do. And he runs into his bedroom, gets the blueprints, and he lays it out, and he goes, this is my vision. I want a girl's dormitory there and a boy's one there. I want the staff there right here on the land. The guy goes, Clive, you'll never believe this. He said, I own one of the largest construction companies in Kenya. I'm going to build your vision for free. Right there. I'm like, amazing. (laughs) And what makes it even more spectacular, the guy said, and I'm not even a Christian. I'm a Buddhist. How many know God can have Buddhists fulfill his vision, right? I said, Clyde, but it's bigger than that. Like, you have multi-site orphanage. Like, how did it happen? He said, well, three years later, the guy came back to me and said, Clive, do you have a dream? And he said, I do. He said, I want to do this all across Kenya. And the guy said, Clive, I have nine buildings I'm not using right now. Pick three that you can turn into orphanages. And as he's sharing this with me, I'm thinking, this is just a great story. And I walk away and like the Holy Spirit does, he speaks to us and he speaks to me. He said, I want you to live plan, vision, dream. I want you to teach plan, vision, dream. And I said, give me the download. And he said, I want you to teach people Whatever the plan is, whatever is in their hands, work the plan. I want them to write a vision down and pray for it and believe for it. That's faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please. I want you to have a vision of what's in my hands that can be released into your hands so you can feel what I'm doing around the world. And then have a dream. What's the wildest dream that you could ever do to give for the glory of God to fuel the vision that he has to reach this world. Hold on to that vision until the day it happens. That's important. Hold on to it. Just just put that one aside and hold on. Don't tell anybody what your dream is. You can tell your friends and what you're believing for with your vision, but the way I see in the Bible, when you share a dream too early, your brothers get jealous, they throw you in a pit, you get sold into slavery, you know what I'm saying? Hold on. So let me start with this. Plan, plan. What do you have in your hands that you could do to build his kingdom? All God has to do is keep you alive. You already have the resources. You could right now say, I could do $100 a month, $10 a month, 1,000. I don't know where you're at with your finances, but you're like, God, I I wanna live over and above my tithe. I wanna live blessed to be a blessing and be generous on every occasion. See, God loves it when we have plans. Psalm 20, verse four says, may he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. That's okay, just work the plan. 
And so many of us do that and when it comes to giving over and above and trying to change the world. And again, 80% of the resources are in America. We just like, okay, this is what I have. And we end there. We, we write the check and that's it. We just do what's in our hands. That's a great place to start, but there's more. Go to vision. What's in his hands that needs to be released into your hands so that you can do it. See, Habakkuk 2, 2 says, then the Lord replied, write down the revelation or vision and make it plain on tablets so that the herald may run with it. When you have this vision that's there, all of a sudden it activates faith. See, you're writing it down, you're praying for it. And you're like, this is my vision. I'm writing it down. God, I'm believing for this. And it's in his hands and needs to be released into yours. It's a wonderful way to live. And then dream, what's the dream? The greatest gift that you could ever give to God to fuel his kingdom. See, I share this with so many people, especially business leaders and people they are like, I wanna have a dream of what's the greatest gift I could ever give to God. And I've lived this way. My wife and I have lived this way for over 10 years, plan, vision, dream. And in 2019, God said to me, he said, you're gonna give your dream goal, that number that you've been holding on to, you're gonna give it next year. I'm gonna put the resources in your hands and you're gonna be able to give it. And I'm like, that's awesome. And then he said, in January of 2020, I want you to stand in front of your church and I want you to declare that you will give your dream goal this year. Don't tell them the amount, but tell them that you'll do it. And January 2020, how many know I'm talking about? Stock market up into the right, Trump's the president, everything's looking good, right? And all of a sudden, I'm like, hey, we're gonna be given our dream goal this year, praise God, it's coming to pass. And then COVID hit. And I'm like, Lord, why did you do that? It's on video, I cannot take it away. Like, <laughs> in a miracle of finances that I couldn't even go into, God's like, boom, 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 money's coming our way, things that we never knew, and boom, boom. And we're sitting there with the largest amount ever in our account that we can give this gift, we can do it. It's there in November, and that's when our big offering is for church. And I'm looking at this, like I said to my wife, we can do it. Like God has miraculously provided the money in ways we never could have dreamed in a COVID year. Like, I cannot believe this. And I'm sitting there and I said, well, you know, though, just in case, I mean, COVID's still around, you know, Biden was just elected, just in case we just don't know, you know, like, I don't know what's gonna happen. We better not give it. Let's not give it tomorrow. We go to bed that night, we couldn't sleep. We're just like, I don't know. I wake up in the morning, I said, we cannot believe the lie of just in case. We've gotta give it. We've gotta do this. This is our dream. And so, yeah, she's like, I couldn't sleep either. So we go to church and I confess to them, just like I'm telling you, like I didn't want, like I was believing the lie of just in case 24 hours ago, you know? And now I'm gonna believe that God's my source. And when I shared that, our church had a breakthrough happen in that moment. And in the next 40 days, $4.4 million dollars came in for kingdom builders. See, the lie of just in case went away and people started believing God's my source. It's in his hands. I can fulfill the dream that he's put in my life. And then our kingdom builders that year was 6.6 .6 million. The next year it was 10.3. Then it was 10.7. This last year it was 11.6. All because of, of a dream goal that came to pass and we stopped believing the lie of just in case. Now I wanna relate this to a few people and give you a few tangible ways. Remember, we're gonna live generous lives so that his name is praised. We're gonna live generous lives so that as we give, more campuses are started, more people are reached, missions is done around the world and, and lives are changed for eternity. We're gonna live this way in an adventure with God in this way. Plan, vision, dream. We had a young man that was in the church. He's 14 years old. He hears this message. And he says to his mom and dad, his name is Park, and he said, mom and dad, I'm writing down my vision number. And they're thinking like, oh, that's awesome. He's 14, I wonder what it is, like $100 or something like that. And he says, my vision is $1,000. And he's like, oh, okay, you know, great. And as he's walking out, his dad leans over to his wife and says, looks like we're writing a check for $1,000. You know, like that's what he's thinking. Uh-uh. Park believed it and started praying, God, it's in your hands. Could you release it in mine so I could give it to change the world for your glory. At the end of the year, Park didn't give $1,000, he 
he gave $1,200 to Kingdom Builders. I think that's exciting for a 14-year-old to do that. Another one, we had a family in our church. The only money they were given to Kingdom Builders were the, re- the checks during COVID. They kept their job, but they're like, we want to give to Kingdom Builders, but God, the budget's so tight. And so they said, Lord, we'll give you the checks that we're getting because we kept our job. At the end of that, the checks are done. They're praying at our church and they said, God, what do you want us to give this year? And we ask every couple to pray. We say, God, just, just pray and whatever God gives on your heart, that vision number that's in his hands, do it. And they said, 7,500, we both feel 7,500. Where's it gonna come from, God? You know how tight our budget is. But they said, we're gonna believe you. It's in your hands, would you release it? They start praying on Sunday and it doesn't always work this fast, but on Friday, there's $7,500 in their checking account. She's like, she calls her husband at work. She said, honey, there's $7,500 in our, it's Friday. Like what happened? Go talk to your boss. It came from your boss. So he goes in and he goes, hey, um, there's money in my account. And if it's an accident, can I keep it? And, uh, you know, <laughs> but um, there's $7,500 in our account right now, in our bank account from you. And the boss goes, I know. He said, on Monday, I came to work and he said, I felt so guilty. He said, I just felt so guilty that we've done so well during COVID that I haven't been doing bonuses. So I told our CFO, cut a check. Every single one of the employees gets a bonus check by Friday. And he said, that's why I did it. How many know God can speak to an unsaved boss on Monday? Huh? It's in his hands. In our life, in mine and Becca's life, God spoke to us one year and said, increase your giving by $10,000. And I'm like, okay. How are we gonna do that? And God said, trust me, it's in my hands. So we started praying. So I'm gonna give 10,000 more that I'm doing. And as we started to pray, two weeks later, I get a call from a, a group in Indiana. And they said, hey, we got your name from a friend and we heard you had a church that loves missions and loves to be generous. We'd like to know if you'd be on our board. And I'm like, nope, do not wanna be on your board. Like they are expensive and they take up time and I don't wanna be on your board. And they said, no, this is different. They said, years ago, four guys got together and said, how could we start a business to give more to the work of the Lord? They started a business and they give half of the profits to missions and half goes back into the business. And this last year, they gave away $3 million. And they said, would you like to be on our board? Every board member gets $10,000 to give to the charity of their choice. I said, well, does Kingdom Builders count? And I told them what it was. They said, absolutely. I said, when's the board meeting? How many know that God can speak to a group in Indiana to call a pastor in Minnesota to get him the $10,000 that he was believing for? Yeah. And this last year, that same group said every board member now gets $25,000 to give to the charity. I'm now giving $25,000 to Kingdom Builders because one day I believed that what was in his hands could come into my hands and I could live that way. One more. Because I want to speak to business owners here. There's a couple in our church that own a business. And they were listening to a message just like this. And again, everybody has different amounts. Some of you identify with parks. Some of you identify with those that gave the 7,500. Some of you kind of identify with 25,000. But this couple was there and he leans over to his wife and he said, honey, if God just keeps us alive and keeps our company going, we could give $250,000 a year to kingdom builders. We could do this. Let's live blessed to be a blessing in this way. And she goes, what's our vision number? He goes, half a million dollars. Let's believe that what's in his hands could be released into our company. And he said, I think it would take five years, but I think God could do it. 18 months later, their company grew to a level that they wrote a $500,000 check. 18 months after that, he calls me up and says, Pastor, my wife and I wanna take you and Becca out to eat. And we're there in that moment. And he says, today, I can't believe it. I thought it would take 10 or 15 years to do our dream goal, but we're here today and we're doing our dream goal. And they're crying as they do that. And they hand us a check for a million dollars. They said, God has blessed our, our, our company so much. And we wanna live blessed to be a blessing. We wanna be generous on every occasion. Here's a million dollars. Our dream is fulfilled. And as they're crying and I'm crying, I really did say this. I mean, we're just like crying. I said, what's your new dream? That's what I said. (laughs) And he goes, I'm not supposed to tell you. 
And I said, I'm your pastor, I'll cheer it on. And he said, it would be our dream to do this every year for the rest of our life. And then I said, I pray you live to be a (laughs) hundred. And at the time they were 38 years old and they've now done it six years in a row. Plan vision dream, plan vision dream. So wherever you're at, I wanna pray over you. Your pastor has huge vision for this church. Thousands of people are moving in, more campuses need to be built. More missions need to be done. Countries need to be reached. And God has blessed you in such a way that you can live in this way, plan, vision, dream, and do it for his glory and for his honor. So Lord, I just pray right now that you would help us to live this way. What an exciting way to live in faith. Thank you, God, that we get to start with what's in our hands. But you never said only what you have in your hands is enough. You said, I have more in my hands. And so God, as you release what's in your hands and you bless us, may we live blessed to be a blessing to change this world for your glory and for your honor. And God, may all of us have a dream, a dream that we could do to fuel your kingdom, to build an orphanage, to start new campuses, to reach more people for your glory and for your honor. May we live blessed to be a blessing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. Oh, come on, you guys give it up for Pastor Rob. What a great word. Okay, can you guys close your eyes for just a moment? Just, just, just give me a moment here at whatever location, wherever you guys are at. Um, that was an incredible message, and the, the visual that we received of what is in God's hands for him to release it in our hands. But honestly, there's a more important releasing that needs to happen in our lives, and that is us taking our lives and releasing it into the hands of God. That's that's called salvation. That's surrendering your life to the Lordship of Jesus. And I just can't help believe that there may be some of you at one of our locations or some in every location that you've never done that. And I'm not talking about joining the church. I'm not talking about being religious. I'm talking about Jesus being your your best. I mean, the, the, the one that loves you more than anyone else, the one that sacrificed his life to have a relationship with you, and you just simply saying, I want to respond to that love. If you've never done that before, or maybe you have, but that love is, you know, it's gone, gone cold, and you know you need to re-up that relationship. In a moment, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to count to three and ask you to raise your hand, and that is simply just you taking your life and releasing it in his hand, saying, I need that forgiveness of my sins, and I want to surrender my life to you. Wherever you're at, if that's you, as I count to three, would you lift your hand up? One, two, three. That's right, wherever you are. That's right, God sees your heart, and your heart is being shown by your hand. You can put them back down now. And so here's what I'd like us all to do, uh, to pray this prayer in your heart as I pray it out loud. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love. You love us so much that you surrendered your son to this earth that he might live a perfect and sinless life to pay for our sins. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did. Thank you for hanging on the cross there and paying the price of my sin. I recognize what you did, and I release my sin to you. You've already paid for it. Thank you for forgiveness, and thank you for freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, uh, before we get ready to go, uh, if you gave your life to Christ or you need prayer for anything, at all of our locations, as soon as I dismiss, you guys can come to the front. We have prayer partners there to pray with you and help you in any way uh, that we can. I want to tell you about one other thing, and then I'm going to pray a prayer of blessing over you guys. When you guys leave today, you're going to receive this piece of paper when you leave. And uh, it says, uh, plan, vision, and dream. Two things. There's one column for kingdom builders, and the other one is your personal life. I'm going to teach on that next week, and we're going to write down our plan, our vision, and our dream. But I want you to take this home, and I want you to begin to pray about it. What's your plan, vision, and dream for Kingdom Builders? And we're going to fill it all in next week, and you're going to turn it in, and you're going to keep one copy for yourself, and you're going to turn one in. Please, no names, because I don't want to to know who this is, but I want to join my faith with your faith, with your plan, with your vision and dream. In fact, all of our leadership team and our staff, we're going to pray over this as well so that God can help you accomplish what his plan and what his vision and his dream is for your life in 2024. Amen? 
So take this when you leave and begin to pray and fill that out. In the next week in service, we're gonna all turn it in and God's gonna do so much more in 2024 as we trust him, amen? Okay, why don't you guys stand up as we get ready to go and I'm gonna pray a prayer of blessing over you. So come on, lift your hands up to the Lord as a sign of surrendering to him and I'm gonna, let me pray this for you or over you. God, thank you for your church. Our hands are lifted high as a way to surrender unto you. So God, our life is not ours. So that means lead us, guide us, and direct us this week as we go about our life. God, our hands are also lifted up as like a funnel that we might receive from you everything that we need to accomplish what you're putting before us today. We don't know what's gonna happen this week, but you do. So we're gonna need empowerment from you, Holy Spirit, to help us in this. And may everywhere that our feet walk, may you give us that land. God, whatever our hands put to, God, would you bless it in such a way that we're successful. Every relationship, everything that we need, nothing would be missing, nothing would be broken. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. We'll see you next week.